Oh my god, your poor dad. Welcome back to Your Poor Dad. You can't choose your sisters, but you can choose your podcast. So thank you for joining us and being the fourth Brant sister. Woo! We are back together. We're back. back. I don't like doing Zoom ever. episodes. Well, me either, but that was... That was our literal only option. That was option. because of you. It was because of me. Um, I'm Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> we know. <laughs> we That's a Taylor Swift know. reference. Oh, we get it? Yeah. Just in case you guys at home didn't understand that. Oh. I think that they did. But Vegas, honey, Vegas did me dirty. Did me real dirty. It gave you the flu. It gave me the damn flu. I was at the Tropicana, which I do not recommend at all to anyone unless you are... The, I can see the value in the Tropicana for what it is. A place is. to lay your head while you go be a dirty little slut around the strip. Oh. And maybe you share that room with like six other people and you all pay like $5 each. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure my room was $25. Wow. No. I'm not even kidding. Um, and then that night before I left, I was sitting in my bed with a fever and aches and chills and i was like i'm going to die in this room i mean probably wouldn't be the first person to die in that room i think you're right (laughs) it was owned by the mob Ooh, yeah then definitely did they confirm that the mob yeah no it's just known like you can look up who owned tropicana and it said the mob mob. (laughs) well there was mafia ties ah i can get into like the details but that's neither here nor there oh heck Uh -uh. no Right. Don't incriminate us. But you guys also got sick. But you guys always get sick, I feel like. I don't get sick that often. Paige does. I always do. If there's (laughs) something in the air, I'm catching it. Yeah. And it's so annoying. And we thought that Bailey was just had allergies because she's like, I'm congested, but that's kind of it. So I was like, cool. I probably just have allergies too then. And then nope. The next day I woke up. Sick as a dog sick as a dog (laughs) i could not get my fever to break and it was just but it only lasted for three days so i was really thankful for that still a solid three days it was a solid three days you know what when you get hit with sickness too like you usually go down so does dad yeah so does dad you guys are so immunity weak it's so (laughs) strange too because there's so many things that i will work through like okay it's just a headache it's just a Mm -hmm. stomach ache whatever but when i get sick like that my body just completely shuts down it's just like "Mm -hmm." mine did too but i actually kind of liked it like i just liked laying in bed and like sleeping i could not stay day one i could not stay awake for longer than like 30 minutes yeah same um it reminds me yeah on there too yeah are you sure yes go (laughs) Pick your little head up and look. It oh, reminds me of when you got COVID really bad. And, Ooh, and then mommy got a new purse. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, I had to quarantine with Paige. Where did you stay, Bailey? Um, I think the, I stayed at the, the place, place where it worked. Yeah. When she was in Oh, Adrian. yeah. And then so Paige and I started to kind of start to lose our minds because like we were the only people we were talking to for like. 10 days at that point yeah and then we just started calling each other mommy and like because i was mommy and i was taking care of her well and that was when my fever i'm pretty sure my fever got up to like 103 which is really high for an adult yeah and i was having like (laughs) some crazy like delirious like fever (laughs) dreams and you were surprisingly like not afraid of me because i would expect you to be like because I don't really get sick everything, that Whatever. And you were just like, oh, like, here's your meds. Here's I laid this. in bed like, with you. I was like, this is great. <laughs> I literally laid in bed with you, remember? And then I was like, I'm not getting sick. And then I got sick. Yeah. 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 But anyways. That's usually how it happens. Yeah. I didn't. It's far away. So what's going on with you guys? Bailey? Oh, me? I mean, yeah. I haven't seen you in literally a week. Literally? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had a really busy week, and then I had a really good weekend. Um, I had yesterday, Sticks and I went to the Driscoll. Okay, I heard you talking to him about going to the Driscoll when I was on the phone with Paige, and I was at the Driscoll on Friday. Oh my god, I thought you were going to say last night. Oh, and you are no. like, oh, I heard you are going there, so I just stayed on the other end of the bar. 
<laughs> that would be so weird. But yeah. it, it's so such a good vibe for Christmas. I know. Nice I, and cozy. Mm-hmm. And they had the band. Were you mm-hmm. at the restaurant party or the bar? I was at the bar. Me too. The bar. Great. We're so trendy. I got an old fashioned Everyone because goes I was to the like, school for Christmas. This is so. That's like they a, do. Yeah, that's like a thing. So for you, clearly. Yeah. Not, I haven't gone this year, but that's an that's a big thing in Austin. Okay, I know, and that's why we did it. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're like it's acting like it's like a new thing. Oh, wait, we're so trendy. It's like we that's are a, trendy. That's it is the trend. It yeah. is the trend. It is the Christmas trend that has been going on for a really long time. Exactly what I just fucking said. I just think it's because you're anyway, in the city and you don't know. Another. Trend. I just said I'm doing the Christmas trend. Another trend um, for me and Snicks is to go to the same restaurant over and over again. That is starting to Which drive me crazy. We did, again. Where'd you go? What? Peche. But they keep going. Where's Peche? Downtown. It's on 4th Street. It's really good. So, Can we not with the fucking long mower? <laughs> like, long mower? <laughs> Why do you Can need to mow your... Their short mower? Why do you need to mow your damn lawn on Friday afternoon? Or where, what day is Sunday. it? Sunday. It's fucking Sunday. <laughs> Honey, the day is rolled This together. is late in the day to be mowing their lawn. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, All right. anyway, Peche is like really good. <laughs> <laughs> I like Peche, number one restaurant. Um, I don't know what I said about it. Just that so you go all the time. I go all the time. Got the escargot. Oh, my God. I love all escargot. Butter. So good. You could put anything in butter and garlic and I would eat it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sticks was like... It kind of weirds me out that these are snails. And I was like, it's, think of it as a mushroom and just like a vehicle. That's for the actually butter. a really good way to, it is kind of like it's a mushroom. It's mushroomy. It's like, um, it's earthy. An oyster mushroom. Yeah. It's like an oyster of the land. Yeah. But better because all the butter. Because all the butter. And it was good bread on it. Oh my. God. Is that all you guys did? Yeah. And then we went home and then we made a bone broth. It was a very, uh, at night? Yeah, we'd put it on at night so it could go for a couple days. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Delicious. And what are you going to do with that bone broth? I already had a cup of it for breakfast. It was good. You just drink it? With some bread and some butter. Interesting. You're an interesting human. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I, I feel like you're it. eating like you're in the old country or something. Yeah. Well, whenever we were in quarantine, Bailey, it was when we were having a hard time going to the grocery store and um she's like we have had a beer and some flour and she like made bread like a loaf of breath breath breath. (laughs) a loaf loaf of of bread bread. and i was like one it actually tasted really good it was surprisingly good i did not have high hopes for that yeah she had i think it was a total of like three ingredients or something is that where the term beer bread comes from yes it's like soda bread soda bread um, soda pops the bubbles give it like if you don't have yeast the bubble is good and I'm I think get some yeast. Disgusting. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, that laugh too. Sick ass. <laughs> disgusting. Go on. Oh, that's it. Okay. Um, okay, so for me, um I started watching Sex Lives Sex Lives of College Girls. You are such which a sex girl. You're coming for my really sex funny girl because Paige has been talking about how she like wants to watch Fifty Shades of Grey, but she was like, "It's such a um, commitment because you know you have to watch all of them if you watch one of them." And are I was you like, "Wow, a little pent up." No, that's what well, I said. Okay. And then she's like, "Now I'm watching the Sex Lives of College Girls," and I was did like, not- "Is this a documentary?" And are like, "What is going on with you?" Okay, did you not? There was like. An entire week of TikTok that I just kept seeing clips and clips and clips of Fifty Shades of Grey. And I was like, okay, well, now I just need to watch the movie. Like, why do I keep seeing I so seen it? pent up. Well, I've seen, I think I've seen all of them like once, but it's like, okay, let's watch them, you know? And um, it's our favorite Christmas movie. It's our favorite Christmas movie. But <laughs> <laughs> I would have to rent them each for like $4 or something. It's like, I don't want to watch them that bad. But I made that comment. I was like, Bailey, let's just like watch Fifty Shades of Grey. And then we haven't because I'm not going to. You can't just watch one and not watch all of them. Why? I kind of think you could. I think you totally could. And also like that movie gives me like I have zero interest to see those. I just like, I don't know. You like Dakota Johnson? No. I don't mind her. Okay. Um, But so then Smacky was telling me, she's like, you have to watch Sex Lives of College Girls. And I was like. I've heard that it's good. I just like haven't had the desire to start it. And so um, yesterday, 
after I watched Jack Frost, which is one of my favorite Christmas movies <laughs> with Michael Keaton. How does that hold up? I was really intrigued. Really great. And I actually cried a lot harder than I thought I would at the end. Um, I spent the entire weekend alone, by the way. Um, both of my sisters were out with their significant others. Um, and I was just like at home living my life, watching TV. And so I cried at Jack Frost and then I went and got McDonald's for dinner and then I came back That's sad. I really wanted French fries. And then I came back home and I was like, okay, fine, I'll start it. And I love this I show. I love it. I love the show so much. It's so freaking funny and I love all of the characters. You're and just a little late to the I know, commission. but I mean, I'm about to finish it and there's only two seasons okay. so far. Yeah. I've been watching Wat, Wat Lotus. You're a little so late. You're late for that. Actually, it just ended, and so I'm actually able to binge it. So okay, well, been there, done that. Yeah, she even watched it. Even I watched it. Okay, well, I am too. Okay, oh, good. I'm glad we have it in common. I also watched Harry and Meghan. Did you guys watch the documentary? So I technically watched it, but the last two episodes just kind of played while I was doing anything else. It could not keep my interest. Yeah. So. Here's the thing about me. If you want to change my mind about anything, just make a documentary. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. About that? Casey Anthony. Yes. You're so wrong. <laughs> yeah, we watched it too. And we're like, I was like, okay, this must be like a very well done documentary if Jade if it now believes Jade, that Casey like, Anthony is innocent, by the way. I don't the way. know. I don't. You I said. Don't think you she's innocent. Said, but I don't know if she did You it. said that you don't think she did it. I said, I don't know. And I kept, and I was like. Okay, I came the into this. Evidence? I came into this documentary thinking there's something in here <laughs> that changed Jade's mind, and I watched the entire documentary, okay. and I was just, I was, I'm still waiting for it because th- here's what, what got me is that she com- she told people that George um, did stuff to her before the trial had even started. Okay, before Kaylee was even born. Okay. So I thought that they were using that in the trial because you have to remember, I was glued to the screen. That wasn't used in the trial, I don't think. Yes, it, it was. was. It was. Yes, yeah. it was like one of the main things the defense okay, but used. But so even if that's true, why did why does that mean that she didn't kill her child? Because what she was saying in the documentary is that he took Kaylee from her bed that morning. That because morning he was, and then because what he happened was trying, for the other 30 days. Right. Because he was trying to abuse her. And right. so he something bad happened. And then... Um, and then she didn't think to call the police for 30 days? She was scared of her abuser. That's what she, they were setting it up to be. So... But also, remember that time she took the police to Universal and was walking <laughs> through the entire building and got to the end of the hall and was like, well... Also, I don't work here. <laughs> like, literally, remember she when she so far. Remember when she named that nanny, and then in the documentary she goes, "So I knew that she was a nanny. She was just never my nanny. So then, why did you say that she was? And yeah, that she She's had your daughter. daughter. Well, and they called her Zanny the nanny, and like they were talking about Xanax because yeah. she was Zanny the nanny. Here's the thing: I'm not saying she didn't do it. But I'm saying, I don't know if she did it. I think it's, I'm not mad at the jury for not convicting her. Yeah. I'm mad at you for having all the evidence that the jury couldn't (laughs) see. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, I don't know. I agree with Bailey. I I have to like get my head back on straight after watching it. She was a good actress. Yeah, she's a great liar. I mean, she's been lying her entire life. Yeah, and she said that. That was like the main point of the documentary. Is like she's like, I was a liar, but I'm not. And lying then about her this. team, her new, her chosen family, um, <laughs> were literally just like lobbing up softballs for her to just. She's like, and he would be like, and then was there anything that your dad would do to you if you didn't want to like have a night with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would um, put a pillow over my face and suffocate me until I passed out. Oh, and that could be the accident that happened to Kaylee. Yeah, that's exactly. That could be the accident. I mean, it's not we, exactly we how we, the conversation we, went. But that is he was almost a, word never for asked word. you about this before. But so I'll ask I'm you for the first time on now. camera. Yeah. Well, it was weird. I, all that to say is that I think Meghan Markle is a goddamn delight. <laughs> okay, I do think that the my biggest takeaway is I she became so much more likable for me. She was so likable. Yeah, I he felt 
differently, but I don't know why. I think that's just think because just you're, me. you're judging her. Well, and you're a woman who doesn't support other women, clearly. Clearly. Because if you have anything mildly controversial to say um, about another woman, you clearly don't support well, other women. Well, I think you support other women too much if you're supporting Casey Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey, that was funny. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Um, but yeah, I think I thought if anything, what, it made Harry look like a deke. But it made Harry look like flat. It, no, Harry th- felt very flat for me. Well, there and were times where he'd be like, "No, I'm not talking about it," and I didn't. I said I was not going to talk about that. So no, not- I thought he had a very firm boundary. He's like, "I'm not talking about that." Nice try. No, I know, but it was just like a little weird. I just thought he was more unlikable than I thought he she was. She makes him like very likable. Like no, she, I think she is the redeeming quality for him as a couple. Yeah, she is the redeeming quality. I was I just like, like their kids. but I think it's also <laughs> him um, <laughs> how he was <coughs> raised. Well, yeah, you're raised in like literally. You have to curtsy to your and bow to your grandmother. That's like a grandmother. very cold existence to grow up in imagine us having to curtsy to our like you know it was the cringiest (laughs) thing that um she did in the whole documentary is like when she did the curtsy thing and i was like why are you like being so weird like you must get a lot of validation that you're so funny yeah but i did i think she's a much warmer and like a less like i think for me, she seemed like a very big social climber because she had climbed like to to be able to like hobnob with the royals. Like hobnob, that's like a very big social jump. But I think she just really is like a very like light and fun person. Yeah, right. Probably. It's also weird that there was just a documentary made just sucking her dick the whole time. You know, like yeah. it, the point of the documentary was to was make to her suck likeable. her dick. Yeah. yeah. But there's so many things that I wanted to know, like what was in that text message that he showed Megan? Well, that's the thing. They're not going to, sh- they will, they're not going to show me the things that I actually want to know. Yeah. But then it's like, it's annoying because you're like, it's almost like we are going to come out of this thinking the worst about William if you're not just going to fucking tell us what he did. Yeah. But like, what a dick. I think something else I noticed about Harry is he's starting to bald just like his brother. Yeah, Yeah, runs in their family. They're like, literally, the royals are all incestual. But it was just so strange to me because I only have ever really seen him head on, you know, from the front. He's always been balding up there. I've never looked up there. And And he just does a little messy. But I'm like, just get, get it off, you know, shave it off. I don't know if he could pull that off. Well, like William can. It looks kind of silly. Can so William we really had pull a, it off? Remember when we had a family friend that had a similar situation? Oh, and he had and, the comb over? Yeah, and, and then we like, were on the river and we were on a boat <laughs> and like his one little tail of a comb over was just blowing in the wind and it was so embarrassing. Like just fucking cut it off. Yeah, and then and he did. And everything was so much better. Like once that he somehow looks younger with it with cut being off. Bald, yeah. Then also, then it hanging on for dear life. In the nineties, William was like such a heartthrob. He was like a babe. Everyone was like, Prince William is he like, was really he's like, hot. he's up there with like Devin Sawa and like JTT. <laughs> Devin Sawa. I don't know who that is. He was on um, what's it called? Now and then, he's the the interest. Oh, he's Christina the Wood. Re- yeah, he's Christina oh, Ricci's Wood? interest, and he was Casper. Yeah. In, um, remember, and Casper was so fucking sexy. Yeah. 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 Oh, I remember. Devin Sawa was like it. Sawa. Sawa. It's S A W A. No, I mean, I believe you. Sawa. Sawa. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, d- what if his real name was Devin Sarah and like he couldn't say his R's and so when he went into casting, Devin Sawa he's like, my name, down is, on his my name card. is Devin Sawa. And they're like, okay, Devin Sawa. Nice. And he's like, Sawa. no, 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 Sawa. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, okay, yeah, we get it. Page Bwant. Bwant. <laughs> um, that yeah. reminds me of... Never mind. Yeah. yeah. Never Definitely. mind. Okay. But yeah, yesterday, um, I drug all of <laughs> Mr. Robert's friends to the Roosevelt room because I was like, oh, it's so cute. They decorate it for Christmas thinking it was Miracle on Fifth Street, but it wasn't. It was Roosevelt room. And so they were like, oh, well, this is nice too. And I was like, yeah, 
It is a nice place to be. It is. It's cozy. I'm. I wanted cozy vibes. Did, did you have a little table? So you didn't. You didn't purchase the tickets. Obviously, no. Okay, but um, also on um Friday we went to Devil May Care, and I'm over it because well, you go too all the loud. Time. I've only been once. When you went this time, did it smell like a sewer? The bathrooms at <laughs> Devil May Care are disgusting. Well, I feel like it also has to do with it being underground. Like, is the, are the pipes just all right there, too, or something? It just, like, is extra smelly. It's extra sloppy. Yeah. And extra loud. Remember it's when we so went loud. for your birthday and there was the DJ that was also a saxophone player? And, and he it was, was, like, playing the saxophone, like, in my ear. Yeah. He was, like, everyone loves this. Yeah. Well, and it, it would have been cool at, like, a club I wanted to eat. Like, you know, like, when there's, like, bass and stuff, like, <laughs> pulsating your body, like, can't, like, chew and swallow your food. It's, like, <laughs> this is weird. Yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking of it being so loud, this guy was, like, asking Mr. Roberts, um, oh, we, like, what are you doing for the holidays? And then I guess he had asked me, but I was, like, looking around because, like, I couldn't hear a goddamn word that was and going on. your chest on. is just, like, My pulsating. chest was <laughs> pulsating. And I... He asked me and then I just was like staring at him and he was like, like gave me this look like, like speak you fucking idiot. And (laughs) that's the, it was like the wrong thing at the wrong time. And I like, like walked away with Mr. Roberts and he's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm okay. And he's like, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? And I was like, actually, I'm fucking pissed. (laughs) Thank you for asking again. It was like, I, that happens to me like once a quarter where I just like turn loose on somebody. But I mean, did you say anything to that person? No. So okay, you didn't, so you turn, didn't loose turn loose on I just, You just wanted to. I wanted to. It's the music. It gets inside your body and it like <laughs> changes something, you know? It's that devil's music. It's the devil's Speaking music. Speaking of the devil, um, so Bailey Me. is the devil. And we were, I, sorry, I was watching a Jenna Crema Christmas movie. And I was like, Bailey, you'll never guess what actor is in this movie with Jenna Crema. And she goes like, oh, wait, what is it like John Goodman? And she was like, no, but close. And then she goes, Richard Karn. I'm like, oh, I was like, who is that? And she's like, Al. She's like, Al from Tool Time. And I was like, yes, that is so random. I know. I don't think that's Bailey being the devil. I just think that's like Bailey having an obscure knowledge and like watching. What are the odds that some random Christmas movie I'm watching? The devil doesn't do shit like that. Of all, the devil works in mysterious ways. Yeah. (laughs) Just like of all the actors out there, I'm like, oh, guess what actors in here? And she says Richard Karn. What? (laughs) What did you think of that? I don't know. It just came to me because she has special powers. Maybe she's um, been poltergeisted. Well, also, I'm a Richard Carden stan. He was um, the host of the Family Feud for a little bit, and he was really good at it. Better than Steve? No. No one's better than Steve. Exactly. Steve Steve Harvey loves Steve Harvey. (laughs) (laughs) He always, he keeps trying to grow a mustache like Steve's, and I'm like, honey, it doesn't work that way. (coughs) And Roman loves Richard Carden. Roman looks just like Richard Karn, actually. He, he looks does. like Wilson. He has the same <laughs> Wilson, vibe Wilson as Richard Karn, like where he's kind of just like the he's sidekick. He's happy with being like the the supporting character. <laughs> yeah. That's why he's me. And it look, he looks at you and he, with his eyes, he says, I don't think so, Tim. Yeah, with his eyes. Yeah. He's always looking at Tiger with like a little bit of disappointment, but like, ah, oh, that's my brother. That's my Tiger. That's my Tyler. Um, guys, I have some kind of depressing news. The Bears lost. The Bears lost. So we are recording on a Sunday. So they just got done playing um a couple hours ago. Did you just throw up in your mouth? (laughs) (laughs) That was your mouth. I kind of thought you farted. (laughs) You're just gonna ignore it. I was gonna ignore it. (laughs) You need to. If you're not watching. Go back 15 seconds and Wait, watch Jade Burke. What'd you do face? with your mouth? What'd you do with your face? It was just a little burp that came up. And she was like, <laughs> she's like, I thought she'd vomit in her mouth. That's disgusting. Sorry. 
Go on. Anyways. Um, so what does that mean for us? So they lost um, against the Eagles. It was 25 to 20. You know why I think they had such a shitty season? Because we didn't go to a game. Yes. So Chicago Bears and Soldier Field. Soldier Field. So- <laughs> <laughs> Chicago Bears no. and Soldier Field. Chicago and Bears Devin and Sawa. <laughs> This is not oh. Devin Sawa, but this is Paige Brandt. And this is this message is for the Chicago Bales and for Soldier Field. And the reason that the Bales did okay, not... Okay, stop talking like that. That's annoying. <laughs> Go. What is the reason? Tell us. That's all I have to say. Oh, the reason okay. is that we didn't go to a game. Yeah. We are their good luck term. Probably. We'll never know. <laughs> Probably. We'll never we have know. no what, idea. What do they have to lose at this point? You know what they should really get us? To Soldier Field, a, to a game with Devin Sawa. <laughs> In a suite. Okay. Obviously. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Sure. Does okay. Devin Sawa like football? Now he does. Is he alive? Is he still with us? What do you mean? He's only like a few years older than me. I haven't heard anything from him in a while. He usually keeps in touch. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what does this mean for the Bears? Does this mean that we get that good draft pick? Probably. Because I'm pretty sure they were like, I wrote it down, but Tiger's kind of sitting on it. They were like three and... 17. 13, <laughs> something like that. Like <laughs> three and 11, three and 12, three and 13. Did some- you talk to dad? no oh why should i i don't know just getting his feedback on on. such a shitty season oh it's right here yeah they were three and eleven yikes that was my yikes (laughs) yikes that's the update yeah that's really unfortunate um so next year they just need us i guess what's your other updates that's pretty much it oh okay yeah um mr roberts is gonna be mom and dad whoa when New Year's. We're going to Dallas for New Year's, and then I invited mom and dad to brunch with us. Whoa. So. Is it weird for you that um, Mr. Roberts is going to meet mom and dad when he's not even your boyfriend? Yeah. (laughs) I'll just say, this is the guy that I like. This is my special friend. This is my special friend, Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts um, and I went live with Paige on TikTok yesterday. And he was loving it. He, like, wanted to put his little face in there so bad. He only had, like, an arm, and people were like, oh, my gosh, is that Mr. Robert's arm? And he kept, like, putting his little ear in there, like, oh, there's his ear. (laughs) Yeah, it was. um, And he was loving it because when he just had his arm just, like, in the the screen, and then people were like, oh, my gosh, is that Mr. Robert's? And he was like, they know it's me. Like, yeah. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Mr. Roberts. Roberts. Speaking of Mr. Roberts, so we were talking about gifts. Are we still going to talk about gifts today? We can. No one else wanted to talk about it. (laughs) (laughs) I still want people to want to talk about it. Well, then you can still write in and ask us. The other thing is, um, I don't know. So if this comes out tomorrow, then that means we have one one more episode that we'll record next week and that'll be our very last episode of 2020 Mm -hmm. and then 2022 2022 thank you (laughs) (laughs) um so i think i don't know if we want to do like next year next fucking shit (laughs) next week if we want to do like because i wrote down my little dating my dating wrapped for Mm -hmm. 2022 i don't know if we want to do that like this time or next time let's do it next time and have like maybe like a dating wrapped um like some highlights from year one of your poor dad yeah and some lowlights well yeah the (laughs) highlights are the lowlights yeah you know um so i think that would be really fun and maybe in that episode, people could write in with gifts still if they want, or mm-hmm. they could write in like some of their favorite moments from this yeah, year. Yeah, they should. Yeah, you guys should write in your Spotify wrapped of dating. Yeah. Let us know. Are you going to pull up some listener stuff? Um. Yes. Nice. What What are some of the worst and best gifts you've gotten from people? Well, being... Um, 
Let's see. One of the best gifts I got was a Dyson hair dryer from my ex's mom, who is, she was the worst mother-in-law, but she did give me a damn good gift. And it was right like a week before I um, ended things with her son. Nice. But you kept that Dyson. And I would say I've had so many bad gifts, like more, I just like hate when people buy me shit just to buy me shit. Yeah. I don't like a present just to have a present, Yeah, you know? Well, I think the gift that I felt the worst for that I was, I just felt like such a brat was Tyson one time surprised me for my birthday. It was the year that we got this little dog right here and he gave me some small gift. I can't remember what it was. And then he gave me a book about Frenchies and I was like, oh, this is really cute. Um, and then he's like, just kidding. He comes in with a big Louis Vuitton box and I was immediately scared because we've, I've never talked about wanting a Louis Vuitton bag or anything. So it's not like he knew my style and, um, he had asked my friends, but they didn't know my style either. So he, I opened this gift and it's a bag that I never would have picked out and, I just felt so awkward. I'm like, this was so much money for me not to have an input on the gift. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I I learned to love it. And it's like a very useful bag when I'm like traveling or going on a trip or something. But it's just like, I'm like, man, I feel bad that you, that was a very thoughtful gift. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's like, that's kind of Mark risky. Mark got me a Louis Vuitton bag when our grandmother passed away. Here's your the GG <laughs> plug of the episode. I already plugged earlier. And um, I was re- very annoyed with him because he didn't come to the um, the funeral and he just bought me a Louis Vuitton. Wait, like my ex-boyfriend didn't go to the funeral either, but he also didn't buy me a Louis Vuitton. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, um, Mark has a different love language. Clearly. I, that was, I think, his way of like, hey, sorry, I wasn't actually there for you. He's but like, like, I was too busy doing substances to <laughs> be ripped away and go to your grandmother, who you're, you were extremely close with, her funeral, you know. But... um. Here's this bag. Sorry, love you. Yeah, and I was like, this is trash. Like, you're so trashy for buying me this. I was so mean. (laughs) Yikes. Um, Yeah, I wasn't as... um, But I would never do that now. Are you listening, Mr. Roberts? Mr. Roberts, I would never do that now. You also don't... Like, that situation's already happened, so... Yeah. The best gift that I probably got was when Sticks and I were in Mexico, and he already took me to Mexico and like paid for all of the like room and stuff. So I was like, wow, great birthday present. This is the best thing ever. And then when we were in the ocean, my, I lost some, like two of my earrings that I just pierced my ears. And I was like, oh, I need like something to like stick through my ear holes. And he was like, and you know what? I think I might have something in the room that we could use. Um, like, I think it'll be fine. And I was like, all right, great. We went to the room and he handed me like a little wrapped box and I opened it and it was earrings. Aww. He just like happened to buy me earrings. And then he like played it so cool. I think there's something we could use for that. That's really sweet. But Bailey was so annoying before that trip trying to pierce her ears. Bailey had had like one piercing yeah. her entire life. And then for this Mexico trip, she decides that she needs three piercings per ear. Why? Well, I pierced my second hole at Target. You, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> so I got I them walked, done. I was like walking around in Target with Hank and I walked up and it Bailey's with the kids she babysits and she's getting her ears pierced. <laughs> and they're watching her get her ears pierced. They convinced me. I was like, all right. <laughs> and then after I got that, I was like, all right, I could do this. That was easy. And it wasn't annoying. It no, was one night. The reason it was annoying is because like she couldn't do it. And so she did it several different times. So she like trapped it. She, well, she well, tried. No, she didn't want to do it. It grossed her out. It was grossing me out. It so is she, gross. Why don't you just get your fucking So she pairs. tried to do it by herself, but she like c- couldn't see the back. So she angled it in so low that it was basically, coming basically out coming hole. out the same 
she pierced a third hole in the front Ew. but it went out the same hole in the back and i was like this is disgusting <laughs> so she kept trying to fix it and i was like I, I did this it is in an infection ear. waiting to happen you're gross guess what? what you can't diy everything but guess also, what? it worked out no but the thing is why did you decide that you needed three piercings for that trip when you've lived your entire life with just one it wasn't even for the trip it was just i am a piercing girl now i have two piercings now i need three it was fine. Okay. Guess what? I Read still have the three. listener emails. Um, this is the perfect gift. So this is the one person that told us about their gift. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> so that was clearly a hot topic. Mm-hmm. While this is not a Christmas story, it immediately popped in my head when you asked for gift stories. This story takes place on Valentine's Day about 10 years ago when I was in high school. I'd been dating a guy for about a month when Valentine's Day came around and wasn't expecting much since we had just started dating and, you know, we were in high school. He asked about things that I liked, such as flowers, candy, etc. I told him that the only things I didn't like were, number one, chocolates, just because I've never been a big fan of anything chocolate, and two, red roses, because I think they're boring and stereotypical, especially for Valentine's Day. Well, Valentine's Day rolls around and he picks me up to go out to dinner with chocolate and red roses. While I appreciated that he at least got me something, it took everything in me not to just laugh as I put the flowers in water before leaving. Not exactly a horror story, but it always makes me laugh when I think about it now. Clearly, high school boys have profound listening skills. Anyway, thanks, sisters. Love y'all. That is some bullshit Mark would do. That's just like, why would he, why, why even ask? ask the question, what do you like? And if her response is, Oh, the only things I don't like are chocolates and red roses. And he's like, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so I'm going to get you chocolate and red roses. I remember her saying something about chocolates and red roses. Probably just go for it. This is like what Mark would do, like, in a different way. He would get me some things that, like, fit his agenda. And he would do that with his mom and sister, too. what, like a PlayStation? No, like, um... (laughs) No, but I do have a story <laughs> about that. Really I have a re- but um, so like for instance, like, and he would do this with his family. Like, his family, like, they didn't really work out or anything, and they weren't very healthy. And so he would like make it his life mission to just show them how unhealthy they are and like why they should be healthy. So like for Christmas, they would get them like healthy ways to make food books, like <laughs> stuff like that, where it's like they don't want this passive aggressive much. Yeah, it's like it fit his agenda it's like they didn't want this they didn't ask for this yeah like how about just give someone a if you're gonna give someone a present try to give them some joy yeah and another story i have about mark um sorry for shitting on mark today but he's in my mark wish you well he's in my path of destruction um but so mark one day i was living with mark and i got a package (laughs) and it was like to mark from Amazon and I (laughs) opened it up and I was like this is this is fishy so I open it up and it's an xbox (laughs) to mark and then in there and it was like in there it was like hey mark and mark is like an early adopter of Amazon he bought everything on Amazon before people were doing that and like every one of our friends knew it like he was obsessed with Amazon And it was like, hey, Mark, thank you for being such a dedicated customer over the last year. We wanted to show you a token of our appreciation. I hope you enjoy from the Amazon team. And I was like, this motherfucker must think I am so goddamn dumb. And I called him and I was like, Mark, why is there a fucking Xbox in our house? And he's like, what? (laughs) And I was like, why is there an Xbox? You ordered yourself an Xbox, clearly. And he was like, no, what is it? What does it say in the box? And I said, it says it's to Mark from Amazon. But that's Amazon's just not giving out Xboxes. He was like, oh, my gosh, that is so nice of Amazon. And I was like, how fucking stupid do you think I am? And he was like, um, <laughs> really? Well, the point is, because he was like, oh, I think I want to get an Xbox. And you said, no, because I want Bravo back. And he said, no, yeah. we're not going to spend the money. Mm-hmm. But then all, but all of a sudden, Amazon, Amazon must got have him. been listening. They always are. They always are. J- Daddy Bezos, he is, he's like Santa Claus. He's always listening. Ugh. But yeah, it was obviously That's... not from Daddy Bezos. It was from Mark to Mark. From Mark to Mark. Yeah. Ugh. Good times. Bless him. Kids Wishing say well. we didn't have fun. My, I actually had another really good birthday, birthday gift. Um, not this past year, but last year with Peter, 
like before he broke up with me obviously and before he got engaged um, to someone else before well, peter piper picked a different fiance <laughs> yeah <laughs> before that happened he he did really great for my birthday what did he do he got me flowers that i liked which i he would get me flowers every so often or like one time so this man lived in San Antonio and that's a solid hour and a half. Yeah, away from us. And one time he woke up basically in the middle of the night and like drove to Austin just to give me flowers. And honestly, it might have been like McDonald's breakfast or something. And I then think he it was a coca. Like a coke, something like that. And then he just like left and went back to San Antonio. And I was like excuse you know those tiktoks that are like oh i'm sorry i thought that you wanted to spend the rest of your life with me because you told me you wanted to spend the rest yeah like that's literally i'm telling you sorry i got the wrong idea so i got the wrong idea you drove an hour and a half how the fuck do i do this that's the one why is the leaf blower back Um, guess who's back (laughs) back back um but then Um, but then kind of like um you were saying about Mark giving gifts like for his agenda whenever me and Tyson would get in a fight um, and then he would his apology would be there would be a Lululemon bag he's like get on to my work, bed bitch. the next day he's like get changed we're going to the gym <laughs> oh my god I did <laughs> remember that cup of carbs you had for breakfast yesterday get ready we're gonna go run it off until you throw up you're training with me today and I'm like no let me go to the sauna please <laughs> Just let me sit in the sauna. I'm going to go to the gym and sit in the sauna. Sometimes I would. He'd be like, you have to at least come with me. And I'm like, I'm, my, I'm sore today. My muscles are sore. He's like, then sit in the sauna while I work out. And I'm like, okay. Oh, my God. Tyson's- and that's a toxic relationship. Mm. Anyways, um, I do actually I like that I have all the Lululemon now. Um, yeah, that's nice. I was thinking Colorado, he did not give me one present. And I got him, like, the most, like, thoughtful presents. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Of what? what? He never got you one thing? No. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, never once. He When he got back from his deployment, he's like, oh, I got you this scarf. And then, have you ever seen that scarf? No. He bought also his scarf. family... You live in Texas or California. It was like, an because he was in Afghanistan, so okay. it was like an Afghan... He was at a rug place for himself buying rugs, and then they gave him a free scarf. That he gave he to probably kept. like... Probably his ex-girlfriend. His ex-girlfriend, that was, or like his mom. Yeah. But I got him like a a book about being a Green Beret that was like the special vintage book that they made the movie The Green Beret is based off of. And I was like, to my baby, gave me a baby, baby, baby. And he was like, oh my God, that is the most thoughtful gift. And I was like, you should give me one back. Then I sent him this like care package when he was in his deployment. And he would always talk about like how, I hate him. He was like, (laughs) He was talking about how Bed Bath and Beyond or Bath and Body Works scents remind him of like being in high school and it gets him like horny. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that's <laughs> we got like he needs to unpack that with a therapist. Yeah. So I went and I got him like a bunch of like I got him like a Bath and Body Works like little spray of like the vintage scent and I was like, Oh, this is like gonna tide you over until like we're together and obviously gonna be happy. And then here's a picture of the perfume I bought myself. So yeah. when I see you. Yeah, but he never got me one damn thing. Well, I'm surprised that didn't work out for you guys. I know. It's, you know what? The writing was on the wall looking yeah. back. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dang. You well, have another story? Yeah, this is sharp left turn. <laughs> Actually, maybe not. Maybe this is what got, um, Colorado going. We'll see. This could have been him writing in. Maybe she was she was wearing Bath and Body Works. All right. This is a person writing in on behalf of her roommate. One time I was making out with a guy. We were keeping it very PG thirteen. Clothes were on and we were dry humping. <laughs> After about thirty minutes of making out, he says, "I'm finishing," and this guy proceeds to finish in, in his, his pants? pants. I acted normal about it as to not embarrass him because I know that happens to some guys. But then he proceeded to do nothing about it. 
just sitting in his finish. He didn't get up to go to the bathroom to pee or to change. Nothing. And then he even slept over at my house. Ew. He slept in his jizz-filled pants. It's probably all crusty. That situation. No shit. It was probably crusty. It was definitely crusty. That situation ship ended shortly thereafter, so I never asked him about it. I just want to know if this is normal or has this happened to anyone else? Imagine. Okay, can I just say one thing? This is the first thing that came to my mind. Being a man, it's so easy for you to finish that you just jizz in your pants. There's no even contact. Someone's done that when we were hooking up before, but then they like got up and like (laughs) cleaned themselves and their pants the best that they could. Uh, so it's like they knew that it wasn't like a, a super great situation so they tried to like you know clean it up like i don't know what i would have done i probably would have been like you good like do you need a rag like well, do you, a, a wet rag now that it's all crusted like it's what like, do you need and the thing is it's like crusting from the tip of the dick to the to the chonies uh, so it's like it's connected yeah. have you ever heard of diaper rash that's gonna and like, like your pee pee is now one with it's because jizz, as we know, is like, it's like paper mache. It's like so sticky. And once it dries, it's like stuck to things. Uh, like, have you ever seen like a towel that has, you know, a J-rag? Oh, my God. <laughs> What'd you call it? A, J- a J-rag? A J-rag? A, like jizz a jizz rag? rag? Ew. Some people would call them jade rags. Uh, You're fucking <laughs> disgusting. Gus Jade calls it that. Jade's like, I'm the sex girl. <laughs> That's what Jade, Jade gives rag. to like all of her hookups. She's like, here's your present. It's and a it's Jade like a, rag. It's Jade monogrammed Jade rag. Ugh, Here you go. You're disgusting. Someone what do you did mean? that with me once. And then I was like, oh, you left your boxers because he kept his clothes on. And then he left his boxers. I was like, how did you even do that? That's weird. And then he was like, oh, sorry, you can just throw those away. And I was like, what did you left them on my floor? You could break them in half, I'm sure, at that point. It's yeah, like starch. I was like, why wouldn't you just throw them away if you were trying to be Also, a can you imagine, like, if we had jizz and, like, if that happened to us, like, and we just sat in it, we'd get, like, a UTI, a yeast infection, I can't even vaginosis. stay in the same underwear that I work out in. Yeah. Like, I immediately, I'm like, Wait, oh, there's you probably wear underwear with your leggings? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Wait, depends. am I the odd one? I wear underwear with every article of clothing. <laughs> I used to wear underwear with my leggings until everyone told me that's weird. Well, so if then anyone's I stopped. wondering, I'm not wearing any underwear right now. Gross. Really? <laughs> Wait, you why know, is... I think why? it's so weird when guys don't wear underwear with jeans. Oh, that, that just seems, seems dangerous. Seems like it feels painful. Pinching. There's a lot of like there rubbing. to go wrong. And it's just like... Yeah. Pfft. Ew. And like, imagine just having like a penis, and it just has to like be I, in jeans. It just does not want to have. A penis. And I taught her how to dangle. <laughs> like, be just freeballing it in jeans for a girl is like. Wait, why are you not supposed to wear underwear with leggings? I think it's like you're supposed to let your vagina breathe. But do you not get sweaty in between your legs? Yeah, of course you do. Of course, of course, <laughs> dude. That thing is the river of Egypt. The de- denial. The denial. The denial. The denial. <laughs> Wait, I don't think I can get on board with this command. Honey, once miss. you do it, it feels great. I think I'll feel funny. It will. It will at first, but then you'll start to feel free. It's fine. I'm, Just try it one time. And where are you gonna go? I don't know, but I feel go like going to run in your little chonyless leggings. Ooh, I don't. I don't know if I can do that, but we'll see. Oh my god! All okay, right. Well. So, so next week. Oh, and next week we're gonna be f- with our poor dad. With Pull what two. else are we gonna be with? I'm gonna keep all of the recording equipment. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna bring it. Um. So we will have a nice little setup at our parents' house. I think we need to get dad, like candidly, because he, as soon as the camera's on, he's like, hi, hi. Oh, I don't know about uh He that. acts like so innocent. He, he gets so shy. He's shy. I also don't think Dad ever found all the ices that we had. And when she says ices, she doesn't mean ISIS. She means Smirnoff, Smirnoff Ice. Ice. All right. Well, write in and tell us about your um year in dating. 
and yeah. like give us like a little brief over your overview. year end dating you it sounded like you're in dating but it's you're you're in, in it sounded you're like in you said <laughs> <Get in. laughs> your year end your urine Tell us your tell urine. Tell us about your urine about dating. Tell us how many times a guy has jizzed his pants by just making out with you. That's power. And if he left them on. You know, there was one guy. Um, he's married now, so like whatever. <laughs> but like he did that a couple times with me. And, the, and we like weren't even dry humping. We were like just making out. <laughs> that was like a thing he liked. I just I think mean, he didn't have a lot of experiences like beforehand, and, and so he, he was just you like just turned him on really so excited, much. and then I was like, "Okay, no. <laughs> none of my business what you do with that situation." Um, yeah, so write in and tell us about, or tell us like the best thing that happened to you this year, and and the worst thing. Yeah. And if you have any favorite things that like we've said, um, or at least favorite that. things that we've said, or things we can improve on, and honey, honey, we don't got, hold just, back. Just call us up. Call, just call us up. All right. Thank you so much for listening. You can follow us on Your Poor Dad Pod at um, wait at Your Poor Dad Pod on TikTok and Instagram, and don't forget to rate and review us and subscribe and get us some stepsisters, and get us some stepsisters, and then also tell us what podcast that we should be on next year because we need to be on some other people's podcasts so we could grow this. And, and then make sure you write in to Your Poor Dad at Gmail dot com. Yeah. 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 Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if God Okay, was bye. Do, 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 do.